welcome and thank you for joining us. You are watching Millennium News Hour and I am Tanziba Nawid. Today we have brought top and trending news from across the nation and the world. Let's begin with the headlines. Biden announced $600 million in aid for hurricane recovery in Florida. Trump criticized Democrats as more harmful than foreign adversaries. Harris and Trump compete for undecided voters as election nears. Mayor Adams highlights achievements and challenges in live radio interview. SpaceX celebrates success as a Starship booster is called mid-flight. Tennessee University shootout leaves one dead and nine injured. Record wildfires rage across Brazil as Amazon faces worst drought in 40 years. North Korea threatens strikes on South Korea over drone tensions. Rare floods hit the Sahara Desert after 50 years of drought. Sectarian violence in Pakistan leaves 16 dead. Yannick Sinner triumphs over Djokovic in Shanghai Masters Final. And Pochettino starts strong as U.S. coach with 2-0 victory over Panama. You are listening to headlines, now news in detail. President Biden announced over $600 million in aid for recovery efforts in Florida after Hurricanes Milton and Helen. While touring the damaged areas of St. Pete Beach, Biden emphasized teamwork, stating, This is all a team effort. It made a big difference and saved lives, but there is still more to do. Biden thanked local officials, first responders, and healthcare workers for their efforts. He stressed unity, saying we come together not as Democrats or Republicans, but as Americans. The president also recalled when his Delaware home was damaged by lightning, connecting with those who lost homes in the storms. Energy Secretary Granholm and other officials joined him on the visit. Biden's announcement included $612 million for six energy projects to strengthen Florida's electric grid. The funding aims to help small businesses and residents recover. Looking ahead, Biden is expected to push Congress for more hurricane relief funding before the November 5 election. He hopes to see continued progress in restoring power and rebuilding homes in the affected areas. Former President Donald Trump called Democrats and his opponents the enemy from within during an interview on Fox News. He said they are more dangerous than foreign adversaries like Russia and China. Trump specifically mentioned Representative Adam Schiff, calling him a lunatic and blaming him for leading his first impeachment trial. Trump said the U.S. has two enemies, the outside enemy and the enemy from within. He believes that dealing with foreign countries is easier than handling internal opposition. Trump added that he considers Schiff one of these internal enemies 
referring to him as Shifty Shift. These remarks echoed comments Trump made at a rally in California on Saturday, where he again attacked Schiff. In response, Schiff tweeted, questioning Trump's obsession with him. As the 2024 election nears, Trump has labeled more opponents, including Vice President Kamala Harris, as criminals. He said he does not expect chaos in the upcoming election, but suggested that any unrest would be handled by the National Guard or military if needed. Kamala Harris and Donald Trump focused on winning over undecided voters on Sunday as polls showed them tied ahead of the November 5 election. With less than a month to go, both candidates targeted key voting groups. Harris visited a black church in Greenville, North Carolina and later held a rally at East Carolina University. She praised local communities for helping each other recover from Hurricane Helene, which hit in late September. Meanwhile, Trump campaigned in Arizona seeking support from black and Latino voters. He shifted his stance on early voting, encouraging people to vote early, despite previously opposing it. Polls revealed a split between male and female voters, Harris led among women, while Trump had stronger support from men. With early voting down 45%, both candidates aimed to win over undecided voters. Surveys showed voters divided on issues like hurricane relief, the economy, and the border crisis. The election could come down to slight shifts in support, with battleground states like Arizona, Georgia, and North Carolina crucial to the outcome. Harris and Trump are working hard to gain any edge before November. New York City Mayor Eric Adams discussed his administration's key achievements and challenges during a live interview on Caribbean Paper Pot Radio. He emphasized efforts to tackle the city's affordable housing crisis through the City of Yes initiative, aiming to address the 1.4% vacancy rate by updating zoning laws and building more homes. Adams highlighted education reforms, including the introduction of new reading and math curricula, mindfulness programs, and increased dyslexia screenings in schools. On public safety, the mayor pointed to reductions in gun violence and subway crime, as well as actions taken against illegal cannabis shops and unregistered ghost cars. He also mentioned progress in decreasing black and Hispanic unemployment and boosting support for minority-owned businesses. However, he acknowledged the ongoing challenges of managing the influx of immigrants. Finally, Adams addressed efforts to combat New York rat problem through garbage, containerization, and public education programs. We'll be back after a short break. Till then, stay with us. This world continuously revolving around various events. Every minute, every second, something is happening somewhere around the globe and you want to get connected to that event or to that specific moment here we come millennium news hour to get you connected with top usa and international trending news which includes local news political news world news business news health and science related news entertainment news sports news and so on Millennium News 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at TV such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV and Apple TV. And also in all European countries and Australia available with the Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IPTV, Worldwide Jago BD Network and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with Millennium News Hour to get the world news on your face. Welcome back to Millennium News Hour. SpaceX achieved a remarkable milestone by successfully catching the first stage booster of its Starship rocket during a test flight. On Sunday, the company launched its fifth Starship test from Boca Chica, Texas at 7.25 a.m. CT. The super heavy booster lifted off and sent the Starship second stage into space aiming for the Indian Ocean, where it will attempt to land on water after re-entry. After separating from the starship at an altitude of 
74 kilometers, the Super Heavy booster returned to the launch site. It was caught by two large robotic arms attached to the launch tower, marking a significant advancement in rocket recovery technology. The SpaceX founder Elon Musk celebrated the achievement, posting, The tower has caught the rocket. This successful landing paves the way for future missions. NASA is closely monitoring these developments as a modified version of the Starship will serve as a lander for crewed missions to the moon under the Artemis program later this decade. This success is a step forward for SpaceX and space exploration as a whole. A shootout near Tennessee State University resulted in one death and nine injuries. The incident occurred on Saturday afternoon as a crowd began to disperse after homecoming events. Around 5 p.m., gunfire erupted between two groups on a street close to the campus, according to Nashville Police spokesperson Don Aaron. The police reported that the gunfire did not appear to be directly connected to the university's events, which included a parade earlier in the day. Nashville Police Commander Anthony McLean expressed disappointment, stating it's unfortunate that a few folks ruined it for everybody. The deceased was identified as a 24-year-old man, well the wanted included two 12-year-olds and a 14-year-old, all with non-critical injuries. Authorities acted quickly with police and firefighters present at the scene. Witnesses described the chaos that ensued as people ran for safety. Rof Muhammad, a food vendor, said, You just feel like you're off in a war somewhere. The shooting is part of a troubling trend with over 415 mass shootings reported in the U.S. this year. Now it's time for global updates. Brazil continued to battle a series of record-breaking wildfires that threatened residents and vital ecosystems. Over 50,000 wildfires were active across the country, particularly affecting the Amazon, Cerrado, and Pantanal regions. The smoke from these fires has forced nearby residents to endure hazardous air quality, with cities like Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro at risk. Currently, Brazil accounts for about 60% of all wildfires in Latin America, with a third of these fires caused by human activities aimed at clearing land for agriculture. Brazilian President Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, who visited an Amazon community, stated that the region is facing the worst drought in 40 years. He urged the public to report suspected arsonists to federal police as current penalties for starting fires are only up to four years in prison. So far this year, approximately 12 million hectares have been destroyed, marking the highest number of fires since 2010. Experts warn that deforestation is leading to reduced rainfall, creating a dangerous cycle of drought and devastating wildfires in Brazil. North Korea announced that its frontline army units are prepared to launch strikes against South Korea. This escalation follows accusations that South Korea sent drones to draw propaganda leaflets over Pyongyang. While South Korea has not confirmed these drone flights, officials warned they would respond strongly if the safety of their citizens is at risk. Earlier, North Korea claimed that South Korea had sent drones on three occasions this month threatening a forceful response if such actions continued. In a statement released by state media, North Korea's defense ministry reported that an order was issued to artillery and other units near the border to be ready to open fire if South Korean drones infiltrated again. The military tensions on the Korean peninsula have heightened, with North Korean officials warning that the entire South Korean territory could turn into piles of ashes following a potential attack. North Korea's leader's sister called South Korea's warnings suicidal, suggesting that discovering another South Korean drone could lead to a horrible disaster. This rhetoric reflects ongoing animosity between North and South Korea, particularly after U.S.-led diplomacy efforts stalled in 2019. We'll be back after a short break. Till then, stay with us. 
This world continuously revolving around the various events. Every minute, every second, something is happening somewhere around the globe and you want to get connected to that event or to that specific moment. Here we come, Millennium News Hour to get you connected with top USA and international trending news which includes local news, political news, world news, business news, health and science related news, entertainment news, sports news and so on. Millennium News 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at TV such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV and Apple TV and also in all European countries and Australia available with the Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IPTV, Worldwide Jago BD Network and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with Millennium News Hour to get the world news on your face. Welcome back to Millennium News Hour. You are watching latest global updates. Officials reported that heavy rainfall in September had exceeded yearly averages in several areas of southeast Morocco, leading to severe flooding. In Teguinit, a village located about 450 km south of Rabat, more than 100 mm of rain fell within a single day. Satellite images from NASA showed Lake Erique, which had been dry for 50 years, now filled with water. Hossein Yabib, an official from Morocco's meteorology agency, stated, It's been 30 to 50 years since we have had this much rain in such a short time. This unusual weather event, referred to as an extratropical storm, could alter future weather patterns in the region. As air holds more moisture, it may lead to more storms. Last month, the flooding resulted in 18 fatalities and affected areas that had previously suffered from an earthquake. The Sahara Desert, the largest hot desert globally, has faced recurring droughts due to climate change. Celeste Solo, Secretary General of the World Meteorological Organization, noted that water cycles are becoming increasingly unpredictable, leading to challenges with water availability. A violent sectarian clash in northwest Pakistan resulted in the deaths of at least 16 people, including three women and two children. The incident occurred on Saturday when a convoy of Sunni individuals was traveling under the protection of paramilitary soldiers and came under attack. A senior official from the Kuram administration reported that the assault led to the deaths of 14 individuals and wounded six others. In response, Frontier Police intervened and killed two attackers identified as Shiites. This recent violence follows earlier clashes in July and September that also resulted in numerous fatalities. These conflicts ended only after a Juga or tribal council intervened to call for a ceasefire. Officials are currently working to negotiate another truce to prevent further bloodshed. Tribal and family feuds are common in Pakistan, especially in the remote areas of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, where traditional tribal honor codes govern community interactions. The Shiite community, a minority in Pakistan's predominantly Sunni Muslim population, has faced long-standing discrimination and violence. Let's have a look on today's sports stories. World number one Yannick Sinner achieved a remarkable victory over 24 time Grand Slam champion Novak Djokovic at the Shanghai Masters on Sunday, October 13. Sinner won the match 7 6, 6 3, denying Djokovic his milestone 100th career singles title. The match began with both players showing a strong serve, making it difficult to break each other. In the first set tiebreak, Sinner quickly gained control, breaking Djokovic's serve on the first point and leading 5-1. Although Djokovic fought back, he netted a volley, giving Sinner the opportunity to win the set 7 seed. The turning point came in the second set when Sinner broke Djokovic's serve in the fourth game, moving ahead after a powerful forehand down the line. With confidence, Sinner maintained his lead and sealed the match with an ace, finishing in 1 hour and 37 minutes. This victory marked a significant achievement for Sinner as he continues to establish himself 
as a top player in men's tennis. Well, Djokovic will now look ahead to his next tournament to pursue that elusive 100th title. Mauricio Pochettino began his coaching journey with the United States on a high note, leading the team to a 2-0 victory against Panama on Saturday. The match saw AC Milan's Yunus Musa score the opening goal, showcasing Pochettino's early impact on a team that had struggled with just one win in their last seven games. Pochettino, a seasoned coach known for his time at Tottenham, Paris Saint-Germain and Chelsea was appointed last month as he prepares the USA for the 2026 World Cup, which they will co-host with Canada and Mexico. Despite only having five days to work with the squad, his influence was clear as the team played in a flexible 4-2-3-1 formation. Midfielder Aidan Morris, who was not part of the Copa America squad, impressed in his new role. Although the U.S. initially struggled to create clear chances, they found their rhythm in the second half. Just four minutes after the break, Musa finished a well-executed move, giving Pochettino a winning start in his new role. We'll be back after a short break. Till then, stay with us. This world continuously revolving around the various events. Every minute, every second, something is happening somewhere around the globe and you want to get connected to that event or to that specific moment. Here we come, Millennium News Hour, to get you connected with top USA and international trending news, which includes local news, political news, world news, business news, health and science-related news, entertainment news, sports news, and so on. Millennium News 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at TV such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV and Apple TV and also in all European countries and Australia available with the Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IPTV, Worldwide Jago BD Network and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with Millennium News Hour to get the world news on your face. Welcome back to Millennium News Hour. Now it's time for business news. Today's New York stock plus price is 19,711.22. The NYC composite is increased by 215.21 points or 1.10%. Tokyo stock close price is 39,605.80. The Nikkei 225 index is increased by 224.91 points or 0.57%. Shanghai stock close price is 3,217.74. The Shanghai index is decreased by 84.19 points or 2.55%. Hong Kong stock plus price is 21,251.98. The Hang Seng index is increased by 614.74 points or 2.98%. Bombay stock close price is 81,381.36. The Sensex index is decreased by 230.05 points or 0.28%. Let's have a look on today's weather forecast.
Before finishing today's news, let's hear out the headlines again. Biden announced 600 million in aid for hurricane recovery in Florida. Trump criticized Democrats as more harmful than foreign adversaries. Harris and Trump compete for undecided voters as election nears. Mayor Adams highlights achievements and challenges in live radio interview. SpaceX celebrates success as a Starship booster is called Midfly. Tennessee University shootout leaves one dead and nine injured. Record wildfires rage across Brazil as Amazon faces worst drought in 40 years. North Korea threatens strikes on South Korea over drone tensions. Rare floods hit the Sahara Desert after 50 years of drought. Sectarian violence in Pakistan leaves 16 dead. Yannick Sinner triumphs over Djokovic in Shanghai Masters final. And Pochettino starts strong as U.S. coach with 2-0 victory over Panama. That's all for today. Keep watching Millennium News Hour for latest news update. To stay updated, like our Facebook page, subscribe our YouTube channel and visit our websites. Our website addresses are www.millenniumnews24.com and www.millenniumtv24.com. Millennium News 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all LED TVs such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV and Apple TV. And also in all European countries and Australia available with a Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IP TV, Worldwide Jago Media Network and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with us for all the latest news worldwide. Thank you.